Thank you. Sorry, I wasn't listening at all about that. I didn't even know that was my name. How are you doing today? Um, I'm alright. I'm, uh, I'm afraid that I'm wearing the same clothes for the second day in a row now. Um, because American Airlines sent my bag to Pittsburgh. So I've got no clothes. Um, that's why I'm wearing a hat as well. I couldn't do my hair this morning. But we think you look great, right guys? Thanks. I probably smell a little bit as well. Sorry yeah. in advance for later on when I meet you he all. He smells great. Just let you guys know. Well, because we're at Comic Con and we're all such massive fans of so many different fandoms, um, I think a majority of this crowd are Harry Potter fans. Uh, what are you a big fan of? What do you like to geek out over? Um, so much stuff. Um, I mean, when I was when I was younger. I, um, before the films, I was a huge Harry Potter fan myself. I'd read, um, I read all the books, and I think I started reading the first one when I was like nine. And the the inspiration to audition and to go up for the for the role was was just because I was such a huge, huge geek about the the books and the, and the series. Um, as I got older and sort of being involved in the films, um, it's it makes it more difficult to be as invested as a fan, if that makes sense. I still think the stories are wonderful and rich and, and, and fantastic, but it's, it's much more difficult to be uh, a fan once you're involved so heavily. So my, my, um, my passions are sort of... Uh, I love, love Star Wars. Always, always loved Star Wars since I was a boy. Um, I used to put it on VHS and I'd hit like the, the repeat button on the VCR so it'd, like, when it finished it'd rewind automatically and just start again. And i just have that on all through the night, every night. Um, Star Trek, I love Star Trek. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a proper geek with stuff, like so much stuff. Yeah, I love it. Well, everyone, um, a VCR for those of you that don't know. Okay, I can't believe in like our late 20s we have to actually remind people what VCRs are. Um, that's awesome. So I have to ask, as you're a Star Wars fan, what color would your lightsaber be? Um, I think when I was younger, I always wanted to be green because. Return of the Jedi was my favourite, and I always wanted to recreate that bit where where Luke jumps off the board and then pulls him, and Force jumps all the way back up and grabs the lightsaber off R2 and starts kicking ass on board the big barge, um, like that guy back there. Um, but then uh, again, this weird, just things change, and then I, I became more in love with the first film, um, A New Hope, and then and then finally settled on Empire Strikes Back, and so I think blue, blue is blue is my favourite colour now as well. Yeah, so I think blue would be my lightsaber. Very cool. Everyone can have like just whatever they want. <laughs> I mean, like with Samuel Jackson just saying, "I want a purple yeah. lightsaber." That's fine. I mean, would you say no to Samuel L. Jackson? No, of yeah. course not. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, let's turn it over to the fans. We'll go ahead and start on this side. Hello, welcome to Portland. Hello, where are you? Oh, hello. Thank you. Um, sorry for your bags getting sent to Pittsburgh. It's <laughs> alright, it wasn't your fault, was it? <laughs> no. Good. Um, so my question is, um, on the sets, did you ever take anything from the sets? Or if you ever didn't, did you want to take something that you just couldn't? Oh yeah, no, I, I, um, I did take some stuff. Um, <laughs> I probably wasn't allowed to. I don't think I was. Um, I, I wanted... I actually wanted the sword of Gryffindor, but there was no way I was hiding that in my trousers in the, the studio. Um, so I didn't get that. That's in like the museum and, and uh, the various tours that are around. I did get my false teeth. Yay. <laughs> Gross. Um, I've, got, I've, I've got Neville's cardigan from the final movie. I, uh, I mean, I stole that, actually. I didn't get given that. I, on the last day, one of the costume guys came into the room and was like, hey, do you want your clothes? And I was like, sure. And we just bundled them in a bag and I snuck out with it. And uh, I was really nervous, but I got it. I got, um, I've got that. I've got the whole outfit, the trousers, the shirt, and the, and the cardigan. It's all like covered in blood and ripped and burned. It's quite cool. Um, anything else? I don't have my wand, that's a shame. Um, I got a piece of the maze. That's quite an odd thing to steal. Um, you know the maze in number four, in Goblet of Fire? I just took a bit of that. I wasn't even in that scene. I just <laughs> went down one day and took it. I don't know what I did that. What was it made of? It's just like plastic tree. You know, like a, you got like a fake Christmas tree. It's just like that. 
So I didn't think they'd miss it. I mean, it's not like a, re you know, so I've got that somewhere. Yeah. But that's it. I think that's it. That's the limit of my, my criminal record. Thank you. All right, let's hop over to this side. Um, so I actually don't have a question about Harry Potter. I have a question about the Syndicate. Oh, wow. Um, so in that you had a scene with a particularly skimpy wardrobe selection. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was wondering if you had any input into that choice or did it just show up on the, in the dressing room that morning and you had an interesting reaction to it? Um, yeah, that just showed up in the dressing room that morning. Um, I'd sort of been aware of it, I'd read the script. Okay, for those of you who don't know, which I imagine is most of the room, uh, The Syndicate was a, a BBC show that I did years ago, 2012? 12? 12, thank you. Um, and um, I played a character who won the lottery and just was a bit of a dick. Um, excuse me, but he was. And I bought, I spent loads of money and bought all this stuff. And there was a scene when I was trying to seduce my brother's fiance. Um, see, not very nice. Um, and I uh, was going to be in a swimming pool, and I wore these these tiny, tiny swim shorts. I mean, they were they were appalling. They were so small. Um, and so I knew it was going to be a pool scene, but I had no idea. But when when I got into the dressing room, and they were sort of I mean, they were, you couldn't hang them up, they were just sort of just there. And I was like, oh, okay. But they were, they were quite appropriate for the character, I think. They were like these garish, multicolored things, and um, yeah, I remember putting them on and being like, oh man, I have to go out there now and take off this robe and do this. And I wasn't really a gym goer back then. I didn't really do much of that, so it was kind of a, yeah, that was tough. But it was, it was fine, I think it was all right, I don't know. You don't see much of it, do you? Uh, it's a glimpse, like a, a blinky you'll miss it. It was gift a lot on Tumblr, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, over here. What was your favorite line from the book, from the movie, The Goblet of Fire? Oh. <laughs> I only had like four lines in that movie, didn't I? Um, let's think. Um, you see, I know what you want me to say, but I'm not. That's not, that's not my favorite. I'll say it. The, the, oh my god, I, I killed Harry Potter. It seems to be quite a common. People like that one. I hate that line. Um, nothing to do with the actual line itself. I just thought. I just. I'm quite a critical person of my performance and stuff, and I just didn't really like that that line, the way I delivered it at all, I really struggled with it. Um, it was really, you know, the turn to the camera and say it, it was just really cringe. Um, what else did I say in that movie? Huh? Amazing. Did I say that? Amazing. I say that all the time anyway, that's like, a, yeah, I'll say that, amazing. I mean, I, I, Matthew Lewis says that all the time. So that's probably my favourite line from Goblet of Fire. Why, why did you specifically choose that film out of interest? Because I like that movie the best. Fair enough. <laughs> Can't argue with that. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right, over here. So first I want to say you were my favorite part of the last two. You were my favorite character. <laughs> Thank you. And I just want to know, would you be interested in doing the further adventures of Neville? I'm sorry, I missed that. I... Yeah, could you speak just sorry. a tad louder? Thanks. Would, is there any chance we'd ever see the further adventures of your character? Of, of Neville Longbottom? Yes. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's not up to me. Um, I, I would be interested in, in um, seeing uh, what Neville got up to post, um, post Hogwarts and the, the battle and whatnot. I know there's been a, a bit of his his uh, future beyond that had been, has been revealed by, by Joe Rowling, and so there is, a, there is canon for it. Um, and I personally would be interested in, in, in learning more about it, whether she wrote something about it or we, we saw something, but whether I would want to reprise the role. I'm not sure. It's, it's not something that I'm going to say no to because that would be insane. I mean, <laughs> no one's going to st st stand here and say absolutely not. Um, but 
it was so long ago for me now. I mean, we finished in 2011, I think, so like six years ago. Uh, and I've done so much stuff since then that have been so different from Neville. I, I, I probably struggle a little bit to go back and find um, the character. One of the, one of the things that was... I mean, there was very little that was difficult about working on Harry Potter. I mean, we had the most amazing time, and I, I will not sit here and tell you what a nightmare it was. It really wasn't. But whenever you play a character for a long period of time, it becomes difficult to, to keep motivation and to, um, to keep trying to find something new and, and, and to tell something new. And Luckily with Neville, I had a really great story arc to cover, and the evolution was something that I really enjoyed portraying on screen. Um, but then I felt we really drew a line under it, and this, the story for me, for me personally as the actor, and the story I wanted to tell was was completed. Um, and being able to come away from that feeling like I'd, I'd, I'd done a job and told a story, and then inhabit completely, drastically different characters from Neville and enjoy that process, I think it would be very difficult for me to then go back and and go back into that. Um, Again, I'm not going to say no, because if Joe wrote something about it, no doubt it would be incredible, because J.K. Rowling's writing it. And so you would have to consider it, you would have to read it, and it'd be very difficult to say no to. But at the minute, I don't feel compelled to, if that makes sense. Um, but in answer to your question, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd hope that we, we hear some more about, about the continuing adventures of Neville, for sure. I mean, I'd be interested in reading it, definitely. Thank you. Thanks. What's it been like to be a part of this franchise, especially with the resurgence with Fantastic Beasts, and then, of course, the play? Ha have you noticed that there's been kind of like a reboot, or is it always just been there and people have more new things to get excited about? Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's just always there. I mean, the, the universe that, that Joe created with uh, Harry Potter was so vivid and, and rich and immersive that I, I always, when I was reading the books, thought, I want to know more about that. You know, I want to know more about Quirrell and the, the vampires um, that he, when he went away, and then I wanted to know more about the Durmstrang and the Beaubatons, and, and now we're finding out about the United States and, and, and their wizarding history. Um, and there was so much of the world that was left completely unexplored, but it was alluded to. Um, and so I think now all we're seeing is an extension of, of the world that we that we love. Um, and then also, as well as that, I, I do feel like there's kind of a a mantle passing, if you will. Like, you know, Fantastic Beasts are not our movies and where our movies are not Fantastic Beasts. Um, they're all part of the shared world, but it's very much their story that they're telling and um, and I look forward to seeing that, that unfold um, and then doing their own way. Um, it's, it's, it's fun to see, I mean, to, to think that what we did has spawned so much. I mean, I saw the play in London last year, and um, it was, uh, I don't know if anyone's seen it here yet, yeah? Wow. It was just incredible. I mean, it was, it was just spectacular as a piece of theatre. I mean, that has changed the face of, of theatre um, forevermore. I've never seen anything like it before, and the rest of the world will have to catch up with what they're doing on that stage production. Um, and to think that that's come off the back of what we did is, is incredible. But I felt like a fan again because I wasn't involved. And that's what I love the most about these new projects that I'm not involved in. I get to watch them purely as a fan. And I feel very fortunate that I've been able to get that back. That's awesome. And you do, um, you've done some theater, yes? Theater work? Yeah. Do you prefer theater over film or does it depend on the project? It all depends on the, on the project. Um, I don't know whether it's TV, film. You could be doing a, a play that lasts three hours. Irish multicolored things, and um, yeah, I remember putting them on and being like, "Oh man, I have to go out there now and take off this robe and do this." And I wasn't really a gym goer back then; I didn't really do much of that, so it was kind of a yeah, that was tough. But it was it was fine. I think it was all right. I don't know. You don't see much of it, do you? It's a glimpse, like a, a blink you'll miss it. It was gift a lot on Tumblr, though. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Alright, over here. What was your favorite line from the book, from the movie, The Goblet of Fire? Oh, <laughs> I only had like four lines in that movie anymore. Um, let's think. Um, you see, I know what you want me to say. 
But I'm not. <laughs> that's not my favorite. I'll say it. The, the, oh my god, I, I killed Harry Potter. It seems to be quite a common. People like that one. I hate that line. Um, nothing to do with the actual line itself. I just thought I just I'm quite a critical person of my performance and stuff, and I just didn't really like that that line the way I delivered it at all. I really struggled with it.